Namaste, ma'am. What's your name? Uh, Neeraj. My name is Neeraj, and I belong from India, Uttarakhand. And this is my first time in Rishi Case. And I want to ask you a question. Uh, why we, as a human being, are here on Earth? And what is the reason behind that? Neeraj is your name? Yes, ma'am. So, Neeraj, do you, do, are you aware that you have different, let's say, layers of consciousness through which you perceive this world, this, this existence? Say, for example, you have a very material, physical layer, which are the cells of your body. And those cells themselves perceive something because they feel pain, for example. So, let's assume that that is like a base layer of consciousness from which you are perceiving this environment, this world, okay? okay? Let's take another layer, which is the emotional, from where you, you experience all the, very, all the various emotions that are possible to experience in this existence. There's also another layer, which could be, we could call the conceptual, from where you perceive all the concepts, ideas, thought processes, you're able to perceive all of that, like I'm speaking to you now. You're not able to perceive that I may be transmitting something materially to you, you may not be able to perceive that, but you certainly can perceive that I'm speaking a sentence and you are able to perceive the meaning of that sentence through the conceptual consciousness. There are also others. There's a creative, transformative layer of consciousness through which you actually create and perceive creations and associations. Like if you want to do a drawing, if you do it from your conceptual, it'll be one kind of drawing, but if you do it from the transformative, creative, you may actually create something which has a much deeper impact. So there are all these different ways of perceiving. Now the question which you have, which is, what is the purpose of this life? Why are we here at all? That is a question that emerges in the conceptual. It's not, the cells are not asking that question, as far as we know. Do you feel that the cells of the body are asking that question? Not really. Is the emotional, the, the actual emotional being which has emotions like anger and jealousy, it's not asking what is the purpose of this existence, because it's busy emoting, right? But there's one layer that asks that question, that's the conceptual. Then, there's the creative, the transformative layer, which is not asking that question because it's creating, it's doing, it's producing. This conceptual layer that asks this question is the base station of you as a human being. The animals have the emotional as the base station. The plants too. The minerals have the material, physical as the base station. The human being has that conceptual, so that's where a lot of the activity is going on. Why am I here? Where did I come from? Where am I going? You will never, ever, ever find this answer anywhere. No one on this planet can tell you where did you come from and where are you going. They can say you were a soul, you took a body, you're going to die, your good soul is going to go on, this, that, all kinds of things. But you cannot be sure of what happened before and what's going to happen. So. Why am I living is a question that will never be answered. But there's some small hope, and that is that the question will fall away. It will fall away. It, it'll disappear as a question, and how does that happen? The interesting thing is that that question of who am I, why am I here, what is this all about, disappears when you start to move into a state of samarpan, surrender. And samarpan or surrender to what? 
what are you surrendering to? It is to the Antaratman, to the living presence, to the cosmic soul individualized here. And you submit, you surrender, you bend down in humility to the soul, to the Antaratman and its command. So you decide, are you going with the command of the Antaratman or are you going with the demand of the ego, of the Ahankar? That is your sadhana in every moment. And as you do this sadhana, what happens is that your, the consciousness itself or the ability to perceive deeper, deeper and deeper starts to expand beyond the conceptual and the emotional, which are the two main areas that you as a human being are functioning from. So it goes up and it goes down, it starts to expand. And as it expands, the question falls away. Why? Because you start to perceive this life from very, very different vantage points. For example, you move into a unity consciousness, where just looking at the other, you and the other and you and all of this is one, one, one. I am that and that is me and I am this and this is me. It's just oneness, it's all oneness. So in that oneness, you're not bothered about how am I here, why am I here, where did I go? It's not a question anymore, it has fallen away. Or if you move to this area of the, of your, of the consciousness where this I, this, this so-called the, exactly. What that means when it opens means actually that your consciousness has expanded beyond the conceptual, beyond the transformative, even beyond the unity consciousness and has moved to the pluriform state where you're able to perceive your own divinity, you see yourself as divine, you see the other as divine and you have Trikala Drishti, the ability to perceive in this very moment the past, the present and the future. Just last night, one of my students had a very powerful experience of Trikala Drishti. When he saw in, 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 in the face that was in front of him, just someone having all the, all the various emotions that are possible in a moment, but all in one moment, from past, from future and from present. Very powerful experience when the perception moves into the Trikala Drishti. So that's how those questions fall away. Even the question, who am I? It falls away when the consciousness expands. So you will never get an answer that satisfies you about, you know, why are you here or where did you come from or what is this life about? but you will always be able to expand the consciousness in such a way that those questions fall away. And this existence becomes one of deep surrender from moment to moment to moment to moment. Samarpan to the Master within, the Antar Guru. So you go into that practice and then like it, it really falls away. Not just that, those questions, but many others. For example, the question, who created the universe? It's a question that just falls away. It puts a smile on your face because you know exactly that this question has no validity as a question even. But it's not that you're frustrated, you're just joyous because those questions are not there in your system anymore. 